Herzlich willkommen zum Kurier Talk im Palais Freiluft. Heute bei uns zu Gast Francesco Milicia vom Pastamara des Ritz Kalten. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Wir werden auf Englisch miteinander sprechen, weil ich kann kein Italienisch und Francesco kein Deutsch. Ähm, wer es noch nicht weiß, diesen Sommer und wird jede Woche ein anderer Spitzenkoch für die Freizeittafelnacht aufkochen. Auch Sie können dabei sein. Alle Infos dazu gibt es auf freizeit.at slash Tafelnacht. Francesco, so we will start with the first question. Of course. Um, what makes Italian food so special and so popular? So, I think Italian food became so popular in, in the world because actually of its simplicity and we in Italy we, we, we keep focus on quality of the ingredients and not on uh, preparations and uh, making things complicated so we keep it as simple as possible but using the best ingredients we have. We have the luck of having in, uh, in our nation mountains, sea, lands, so we have amazing meat, amazing fish, incredible vegetables because also of the weather, so it's always es es extremely hot in summertime and uh, not very cold in winter, mm -hmm. especially in the south part. So we really have the, the, that luck that not many countries have to have amazing products. So I think it's actually not the Italian chefs that made Italian food so popular, but it's the Italian ingredients that mm -hmm. made Italian food so amazing and uh, so loved from uh, all around all around the world people. Mm -hmm. And do you have favorite ingredients? Um, I would not say like I have favorite ingredients. I mean, of course, I love fish because I come from Sicily, so it's an island and uh, we fish a lot mm -hmm. all the year. So I, I was born and grown with a lot of uh, fish. So and also shellfish, uh, clams, mussels. So of course, I love fish and vegetables. I'm not a big meat lover. Uh, but I also eat meat, um, so yes, so fish in general I think is my favorite ingredient yeah. mm -hmm. and everything that comes from the sea. Mm -hmm. And where do you shop really good ingredients in Vienna? So for the most part of our Italian products uh, we have an Italian supporter, mm -hmm. um, importer, sorry. So basically we usually put our producers in Italy in contact with him and then uh, for fish I have different companies so I will mention uh, Eschken uh, in Vienna so they have uh, really good fish but I also have some uh, fishermen in Italy mm -hmm. depends where I find the fish uh, because we actually use most of the time wild fish so it's not very easy to find it every time so it depends I have more options where I can um, order the fish. Mm -hmm. Francesco, I would like to know, um, you grew up in Sicily. Do you have childhood memories about Italian food? I was born in a very simple Sicilian family. Mm -hmm. I mean, our issue of the day in, in, in our house was what to eat for the next meal. So my family was always thinking what to eat for dinner, what to eat for lunch. And that was the period of the day that Every, all the family was going to sit together talking about how was our day and uh, we had good meal and the good food for me was that thing that was making my family happy and uh, bringing them together. So I grew up with this idea that uh, good food make people happy and bring them together. That's why I chose to become a chef and I started really young studying in the catering school and then I started doing all my experiences around in, uh, in Europe, then back to Sicily, now in Vienna since mm -hmm. uh, the Pastamara opened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's talk about inspiration. Uh, how do you create a new meal? A new meal, a new dish, how do so you create? The, the ideas of the dish, I think that I have two ways of creating a new dish. Mm -hmm. So one way, it's uh, starting from a really traditional recipe. So getting those ingredients mm -hmm. and re-elaborating the recipe in a modern way. Mm -hmm. The other way is to create a dish from the scratch. 
So usually for that we go seasonal. So we see what's, what the season is giving us. Um, now it's summer time, we have apricots, we have all the summer vegetables. So we create the menu with the ingredients that we have for that season and we try to make dishes from the scratch. So there is always two ways of creating mm -hmm. dish, at least in pasta mara. That's okay. what we do. Okay. And you have been living in Vienna for four years now. Yes. Um, do, you do you like restaurants and fine dining in Vienna? I think Vienna is growing a lot and I can already see the difference between when I came and now, even if there was the COVID period in the middle. So a lot of new places opening and the hospitality um, is really, really growing a lot. I lived four years in London as well. So I compare Vienna to London sometimes just to see how it's going. And I think if Vienna keeps the direction that it's taking, in 10 years we can be almost to London competition mm -hmm. for restaurants. There are a lot of new places in Vienna that I think they are really going, also Italian restaurants okay. that are going very good. Okay, and do you, do, you have, do you have a favorite restaurant in town? Yes, if we talk about Italian restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, I have two mm -hmm. favorites. So one is uh, Materia. They make uh, really nice uh, food with only testing menus. So I think they have three menus. You can choose just testing menus and they change weekly. Mm -hmm. And Stefano, the chef, is from Rome and he makes really interesting things. Mm -hmm. The other is Cucina Cipriano and it's like a trattoria di mare, so they only make fish. And there, I think you find it's one of the best fish restaurants in Vienna for me. It's mm -hmm. really simple, but uh, the fish they have, it's really unbelievably, unbelievably good. Okay, so. thank you. And do you have a favorite dish you cook when you are very hungry? <laughs> pasta. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, for us Italian, pasta, it's like you eat it at least one time a day. It's okay. uh, the most easy thing to do and quick. So, of course, uh, I, I'm a, a big lover of carbs in general, so bread and pasta. But, of course, I, I, love, I love pasta because of my culture. So, when I'm really, really hungry and I, I don't have that much time, mm -hmm. usually a plate of pasta, just even aglio olio, so garlic, chili, okay. and a good olive oil for me, it's okay, it's perfect. Okay. Okay, then I have to ask, um, how do you find out that pasta is al dente? <laughs> so, every, every, every shape of pasta, of course, has a different cooking time. So, in general, if I have to give a rule, I would say that you just read the cooking time in the packet and just do it one <laughs> minute less, and I think you're on the point. But, of course, you have always to taste and make sure that the pasta is not overcooked and too soft. I, I don't like uh, overcooked pasta because it doesn't have texture, it, like, it doesn't have bite, so it also gets boring when you eat because if you have pasta al pomodoro, it's just a pasta with sauce, there is nothing that gives consistency to the dish, so a pasta, the pasta al dente is really important to have some bite and uh, not get bored from the dish. Okay, we learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here and answering my questions, Francesco. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Danke auch Ihnen fürs Zuschauen und ich bin mir sicher, Sie haben jetzt Lust bekommen, nächsten Mittwoch oder übernächsten Mittwoch auch bei der Tafelnacht vorbeizuschauen. Auf Wiedersehen. <lacht>